For the first part of this video click the link on screen. What are some ridiculous history facts? Ancient Greek and Roman marble statues were actually originally painted and were colorful. A lot of the statues paint faded away and went away over time. Some people cleaned off the paint thinking it was debris or dirt, and other people just plain cleaned and removed all of the paint off of them because they preferred the look of white marble. Rome was actually a very colorful city and it wasn't all made of just boring plain white marble. Stalin used to take people on the side to have some drinks with them or invite them to join him for a vacation in his holiday home. Khrushchev wrote about how much he hated those drinking breaks and vacations. Of course Stalin would try to get you drunk and get info from you, and could decide he wants to kill you during the vacation, but you can't really decline his invitation. Khrushchev would also try to subtly get Stalin drunk as well and get info from him. One time during a vacation with Stalin, Stalin asked him to dance a Ukrainian folk dance in front of a bunch of people. Khrushchev hated dancing. But he had to do it. Before Abraham Lincoln became a politician, he was a champion wrestler. With more than 300 bouts under his belt, Lincoln only lost one match in his career and was inducted into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame in 1992. The Massachusetts Colony Band Celebrating Christmas During that time period many people used it as an excuse to get hammered and party. Another tradition was that the young adults would cross-dress then go door-to-door -door singing songs and demanding food. This clearly doesn't fit with Puritan lifestyle, so the governor banned public celebrations. People could still celebrate it in their homes if they didn't get too rowdy. I think it was unbanned when Massachusetts became a state, but didn't become mainstream until Christmas became a national holiday. Nashville briefly legalized prostitution during the Civil War. Union soldiers stationed there kept getting syphilis, so the no prostitutes were put on a large barge in the river. I'm a little fuzzy on what happened after that, but no it didn't work very well. So it was legalized and prostitutes had to be registered or get a license, I can't remember which, and were required to have STD checks. This lowered the amount of prostitutes with syphilis because it was getting caught and treated. That lowered the amount of soldiers getting syphilis and made the army happy. It was outlawed shortly after the war ended though. A very high-ranking Nazi, Ernst Röhm, was gay, was killed 1934, and Hitler knew about it. But it didn't bother him. Funny how homosexuals were then put in concentration camps. During the Viking era, there was a leader named Sigurd. He allied with a Viking warlord named Thorsten. He wanted to conquer more land and expand his territory. He had already been very successful in doing so. This was until he feuded with another leader called Malbuktuthd or Maltusk as his front two teeth were abnormally large and buck-toothed. They decided to settle their matters on the battlefield and both agreed on bringing 40 men each for the battle. However, Sigurd ignored the terms and brought 80 men. Bucktoothed had realized he had been betrayed but did not give up. They killed a number of Sigurd's men, but alas, they were overpowered and were all killed. Here's the catch, after the battle, Sigurd ordered his men to behead all the enemies and tie them to their saddles as trophies. However, as Sigurd rode home in victory, the severed head of Bucktoothed pierced his leg, which led to an infection, killing him soon after. The British once sent a guy to China as a spy so he would uncover the secrets of making tea. Potatoes were not very popular as a food in France. Like they were seen as fit only for animals. Not only that but they were considered generally not digestible by humans. So a pharmacist named Parmentier knew they were good food and wanted to popularize them among the working class. So he got a two-acre farm to grow potatoes and placed armed guards around it at all times. People assumed armed guards meant something very valuable was growing there so they began to steal the potatoes. That's how potatoes became popular in France's working class. There are literally entire books of anecdotes of this sort on Ben Franklin. He was so good at trolling under the pen name of a female. Silence do good, he received several marriage proposals. Only then did he reveal her true identity. Pepsi once had the sixth largest military in the world after the price of Russian vodka couldn't cover their deal for Pepsi products. So they traded 17 submarines, a frigate, a cruiser, and a destroyer for a trade deal. Fun fact, the president of Pepsi company at the time told the national security advisor we are disarming the USSR faster than you are. Karl Marx's great great grandson has a YouTube video of him doing parkour, called exclamation marks. Former US President Andrew Jackson was approached by a man who pulled a gun on him. Smaller history fact this was the first assassination attempt on a US President. The man pulled the trigger and the cap went off but the gunpowder failed to light. The man pulled a second gun and fired, but the gunpowder again failed to light. The assassin tried to get away, but not before Andrew Jackson got him and beat the shit out of him with a cane. 
Two separate times that we know of, one single man has stopped the world from going into thermonuclear war. During the Cuban Missile Crisis and the American blockade of Russian ships to the island, a Russian submarine on patrol was found by the Americans and was under soft attack. Ships were dropping depth charges on them to try and get them to surface and communicate. Of the three officers on board, two wanted to fire a nuclear torpedo in retaliation. Vasily Arkhipov disagreed and was able to prevent the launch because it required unanimous agreement. They surfaced and didn't start World War III. The second man was working at an early warning station in the USSR, and they, falsely, detected a missile attack from America. Stanislav Petrov stalled the alarms and prevented a preemptive counterattack. 25 minutes later he got confirmation it was a glitch and had also prevented World War III. There have also been countless other accidents involving nuclear weapons throughout the decades, with many coming dangerously close to triggering an unintentional explosion. We're lucky, to say the least, to have avoided catastrophe so far. Ronald Reagan was a prolific lifeguard when younger, saving 77 people from drowning. In the book, The Art of War, I read about a Chinese general whom, after defeating his enemies, invited them all over for dinner. They accepted but were cautious. At the dinner table, the other men were skeptical because they had thought that the general was going to poison them. This was far from the truth. The general actually retired his enemies by giving them a place to stay, riches, and women. They never betrayed him. Make friends with your enemies so that they don't betray you. We'll get more info later, but if anyone can do me the favor that would be great. Edit. It was actually the 48 laws of power that I was reading but I believe that the author, Robert Greene took some inspiration from the art of war. My mistake. Edit 2, wow, my very first silver award ever. Thank you, awesome stranger. Edit 3, here is a quick summary. In 959 AD, General Zhao Kuangyun became Emperor Song, and it was probable that he would be murdered in a year or two. Desperate to break the cycle, he invited his fellow powerful generals to a banquet and dismissed the guards. The generals in the room were now very afraid that the king was planning on killing them all, here and now, in one fell swoop. To their surprise, and relief, the king made them an offer, give up your commands and I will give you fine estates and beautiful dwellings where you can enjoy singers and girls as companions. The now relieved generals took him up on his offer, realizing that a life of riches and security preferable to a life of constant anxiety and struggle. Just like that he made enemies into friends. Hitler, Stalin, Trotsky, Freud, and Tito were all living in the same area of Vienna in 1913. Pythagoras drowned a student to death because the student proved the existence of irrational numbers which contradicted Pythagoras and his cults, the Brotherhood, beliefs. The first known political cartoon is Egyptian, and shows Hot Shepsut, the only woman pharaoh, pegging her lover and chief architect Senwit. The death of Cato. He killed himself by ripping out his internal organs one by one. One of my favorites is the story of Tommy Fitzpatrick. In 1956 he stole a small plane from New Jersey for a bet and then landed it perfectly on the narrow street in front of the bar he had been drinking at in Manhattan. Two years later, he did it again after someone didn't believe he had done it the first time. What's also crazy is that the punishment for the first time ended up being only a $100 fine, since the charges were dropped by the owner of the plane, and the second resulted in only six months in jail. People were buried alive so often in the 19th century that a safety coffin was invented so the dead would have the ability to alert those above ground if they were still alive. Henry Cavendish. The man who was vital in the discovery of gases and discovered hydrogen. He inherited a ton of money from his uncle, and built a special castle, I think. He was incredibly introverted, so it was designed so that he never had to meet or see any of his servants. He communicated with them through notes only. He did. However, appreciate other scientists coming to visit and talk. His works mostly came after his death of course, but I found this guy interesting. In 1994, a war almost broke out between Russia and Sweden because of fish farts from herrings that's how they communicate, because Sweden heard the farts in their waters and they thought it was Russian submarines. Emperor Caligula of Rome declared war on Neptune. He had his troops randomly throw spears into the sea, and collect seashells as war trophies. The entire country of Malta was awarded the George Cross for its efforts in World War II. It's still on their flag. When the Allies were invading Germany, General Eisenhower sent a message to General Patton telling him to go around Trier because it would take four divisions to capture. Patton sent him back a message saying have taken Trier with two divisions. What do you want me to do, give it back? Surprised it didn't get mentioned, but here goes, the freaking Siege of Tyre. 
by A. Alexander of Macedon. So, Alexander the Pretty Awesome was doing his thing, rampaging through the Persian Empire, because that's what you do. Anywho, he comes across the island city of Tyre, an impregnable island fortress who had been a wee bit too chummy with the Persians, for Alex the surprisingly vindictive. They had a powerful navy, that kept hampering efforts at taking the siege to them and Alex the more than adequate was getting peeved. Now, the whole issue was that impregnable island fortress required an attack by sea. So, Alexander the balls to the walls just decided to turn a shallow isthmus between the mainland and the island. Into a landmass, thus turning Tyre into a peninsula. Crazy shenanigans, involving cranes on boats, naval raids to impede on the progress of the Macedonian troops and engineers. In the end, Tyre fell, Alexander the impossibly persistent was rewarded with victory. In 1967 Australian Prime Minister Harold Holt disappeared while swimming in the ocean. He was presumed drowned, so naturally that year we named a swim centre after him in memoriam. Once FDR died, Truman didn't know about the Manhattan Project, but when he found out he subtly tried to tell Stalin they were working on something big. Stalin was like yeah dude, I knew before you did. Since he had so many spies in America. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video please like and subscribe.